Anya. Get rid of her. We decided you were a tragic heroine in the opera. How did I not see the signs? In the end of last season, Tanya is sitting with Greg in the last episode, and he's talking about his health issues, and she says, I've had every kind of treatment over the years. Death is the last immersive experience I haven't tried. And I was thinking it'd be so fun to bring Tanya back because she's such a great character, but maybe that's the journey for her, is like a journey to death. And not that I really wanted to kill Tanya because I love her as a character and obviously love Jennifer, but I just felt like, you know, we're going to Italy. She's such a kind of diva, larger than life, female archetype. It just felt like we could devise our own operatic conclusion to Tanya's life and her story. Yeah. Uh, Tanya. Yeah, in a minute. I just think her dying at the hands of someone else felt too tragic. It felt like she needed to give her best fight back and that she, in a way, had some kind of victory over whoever was conspiring to get rid of her. So it just made me laugh to think like she would like take out all of these cabal of killers and that after she successfully does that, that she just dies this derpy death. And it just felt like that's just so Tanya. <laughs> you got this. I think as far as like what happens to Greg and the conspiracy of, of Tanya's death, it's possible that I think Portia is scared enough to just leave it alone. But the fact that all of those guys die on the boat, it feels like there's got to be somebody who's going to track it back down to Greg. But maybe you'll have to wait to find out what happens. At the end of the show, you see the three generations of men and there's this attractive woman who crosses and they all sort of gawk at her. You know, my hope is that Dominic does change, but there is a little bit in the texture of it that their relationship with women is going to always be fraught with this sexual desire. When she hugged me just now, I got a little aroused. No, no, it's a natural reaction. He kissed me, but that was it. Okay, that was all. The question of like whether Harper and Cameron did more than the kiss, I think probably that's just all that happened. At the same time, there's some time that isn't completely accounted for. And I think that that's why it's like eating at Ethan. Ethan comes to Daphne and did they have some kind of little dalliance on the island or whatever happened, it allows him to let go of the jealousy that has been brewing with him. And it kind of brings back that first kind of sexual charge that happens in the beginning of relationships that sometimes fades away over time. By the end, you're like, well, maybe what Ethan and Harper needed was just a small dash of what Cameron and Daphne have. Thanks for putting up with me. I love you. It feels like Cameron, to me, is like one of those guys that's not really going to change. <laughs> Some of the unspoken things between them, you wonder if that's going to ultimately catch up with them. It is somewhat of a happy ending, although there's dark clouds in the horizon too. The first season kind of highlighted money, and then the second season is sex, and I think the third season, it would be maybe a kind of satirical and funny look at death in Eastern religion and spirituality, and it feels like it could be a rich tapestry to do another round at White Lotus. Yeah.